Hello and welcome to Sweet Shot Games Dota 2 Top 10 Worst Heroes. Okay, so first of all, let me just say that none of these heroes are really that bad. It's just that they're more situational type heroes, and it's going to depend more so on your team and your opponent's team as to how effective you can be with these heroes. When you end up comparing all of the heroes in the game to each other, some are naturally going to end up being better or worse than uh, some of the others, simply just because of Dota 2's competitive nature. So, without further ado, here they are. Number 10, Ursa. <sighs> okay, so there's going to be some naysayers for each of these heroes, and that's okay. But hear me out. Ursa just barely makes this list, because there are so many different ways to deal with him. If he snowballs and gets out of control, it's probably your own fault for letting him get that far. It's easy to gank him, whether he's in lane or jungling. It's easy to deal with him. You can run away or purchase a ghost scepter or however you need to do it in order to avoid being attacked by him. Number 9, Sniper. So Sniper's pretty cool. I like him. He's got the longest attack range in the game, and he can dish out some pretty good damage. However, he's still got one problem, and that is an escape mechanism. He doesn't have one, and he doesn't have the brute damage to be able to demolish your opponents before they get to him. So, that poses a pretty big problem. Without having an escape mechanism, you need to pick up Shadow Blade. And once you got that, well, your opponents will just pick up a dust. That's why I put him at number 9. Number 8, Warlock. Warlock is another really cool hero, especially once you get an Agnims and a Refresh Orb on him. But that takes some time, so try jumping into a custom game like I did here and using the WTF mode. It's a lot of fun, trust me. Anyways, I had to put him at number 8 because it does take a long time for his abilities to come off cooldown. And so if you don't have cheats in a normal game, well, you're going to have to make sure each of your abilities count when you use it. Otherwise, it's just going to go to waste. And so this is a big problem being a support hero because... If you happen to waste one of your abilities on, you know, the creeps or only hit one person with it, well, then it goes to waste and it's going to be a while before you're able to use that again. But then again, flaming golems are pretty sweet. Number 7, Necrolite. Well, Necrolite's actually a hero I don't like, but that's mostly because I think he's boring. However, I have him at number 7 because he's too item dependent to be a support and he's just not quite up to snuff as a solo mid. However, I do see that he has potential as a tank once you do have some items. So I would normally have him a little bit lower on this list, however with some of the latest buffs to him, he has gotten a little bit better. Number 6, Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker is another one of those snowballing, pub stomping heroes, but he's actually really easy to deal with. And just like any snowballing hero, you basically just want to keep them down and not let them get any kills of their own, otherwise you might run into some trouble. But as long as he doesn't pick up any kills, you're really not going to have that much of a problem with him. So it's really going to be situational. If you have a really good ganking team, then he might work. Otherwise, it might be a little too difficult for you to set up a gank on your own. Number 5, Bloodseeker. So much like Spirit Breaker, Bloodseeker is a pub stomping, snowballing hero. And like I mentioned before, the way to deal with snowballers is to not die to them. Of course, this is sometimes easier said than done. However, Bloodseeker needs solo mid, and he needs the farm, the levels, the runes, and the kills. As long as he doesn't get all of this, 
you should be okay. And he's going to end up being rather ineffective for the rest of the game. And that's why I put him at number five. Number four, Weaver. Weaver can be a real pain to deal with. But again, it's really not that hard. Simply get some sentry wards, put him down in the lane that he's in, and voila. Suddenly he can't go invisible every two seconds and get away from you. Or just deny him farm and kills. Because he really needs that early Lincolns or Radiance in order to be effective. And so you can't put him in the safe lane because he's just not that hard of a carry. And so typically you have to put him in the off lane. And he's not the worst hero you could put there. But again, he's not going to get the farm that he needs in order to be effective mid to late game. Number 3. Meepo. So Meepo actually has a lot of potential. The problem is you need five hands in order to unlock that potential. One for each Meepo, that is. And yes, I've seen some people completely dominate with Meepo. And yet, they're still not using him to his fullest potential. And so I have to put him at number three because it's really easy to kill him. Because if you kill one, you kill them all. So as long as you don't let Meepo get level 25 and 6 items by 15 minutes, he's really not going to be that big of a problem to you. Number 2. Huskar. So Huskar is simply just one of those heroes where there's going to be someone else who can just do his role better. If you try and put him as a solo mid, there's just so many better options that there's really no use in having him there. And you know there's so many other options as a carry. And another problem is that he needs to be really low on HP in order to get his full damage output. So all your opponent needs to do is simply stun you while you're low on HP and stop you from attacking. So typically you're just going to end up feeding more than anything else. So that's why I have him at number two. Last and definitely least... Timbersaw. So did you guess it? I figured it would be pretty obvious because there's not really much you can do with Timbersaw. You can't lane him top, you can't lane him mid, you can't lane him bottom. So what do you do with him? Put him in the jungle I guess and hope you can win 4v5. Sure he can jump in and tank up a little bit but he's really got nothing else. Nobody's going to stand around in his ultimate long enough for it to do anything. And even though he can do some pure damage, it's really not enough to make a difference mid to late game. So there you have it. That's my list. And just to re-emphasize, none of these heroes are terrible. It's just that there's other heroes that can perform their roles better. Also, please be sure to check out the description below for some links where you can follow me, contact me, and just check out some of my other stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.